Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice polynomial equation. x minus 1 to the 4th equals x to the 4th, and we're going to be solving for x values. Now, this might look like a quartic equation because of the 4th powers, but this is not a quartic, it is actually a cubic equation, because x to the 4th power, as you'll see in a little bit, will cancel out. I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So, for the first method, I'm going to go ahead and expand the left-hand side by the binomial theorem. Remember the coefficients, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. This is going to be x to the 4th minus 4x cubed plus 6x squared minus 4x plus 1. That's the left-hand side, and the right-hand side is just x to the 4th power. Now, you can see that the x to the 4th power cancels out leaving us with a cubic, right? But notice that we have everything pretty much, not everything, but the leading coefficient is negative. Anyways, let's rewrite this. Negative 4x cubed plus 6x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0. Now, we have a cubic equation, but we're going to make it a little easier to solve. Uh, first of all, we want to make this a monic polynomial, which means the coefficient of x cubed or the leading coefficient will be 1. I shouldn't say the coefficient of x cubed because we're going to change variables. All right? So one way to do this is, first of all, x cubed is a perfect cube, but 4 isn't, right? Or negative 4 isn't. So let's go to multiply both sides by negative 2, because you have to multiply everything. When you distribute, obviously negative 2 times 0 will be 0. 8x cubed minus 12x squared plus 8x minus 2 equals 0. And then at this point, you can do a couple things. You can either replace x with y over 2 or any other variable, or you can do this. Since this is a perfect cube, I can write it as 2x to the third power minus, and I want to get the 2x to the second power here so that I can continue the pattern. But that gives me 4x squared. I do need 12, so I, I'm going to multiply by 3. And then another 2x inside the parentheses, which should be multiplied by 4 because I have 8x. Notice that. And then minus 2 constant term at the end. Now, you probably figured it out, right, that we're going to call this something. Because this also indicates that, okay, 2x should be called something. How about y? And this gives us y cubed. And then you're like, y. y cubed minus 3y squared plus 4y minus 2 is equal to 0. Obviously the monic polynomial is easier to solve, right? And this one is a very special one because if you pay attention, and I've been saying this over and over, that's the first thing you should check in a polynomial equation. 1 minus 3 plus 4 minus 2 equals 0 because 5 minus 5 equals 0. What does that mean? It means the sum of the coefficients of this polynomial is 0, which means y equals 1 is a solution. Make sense? Cool. y equals 1 is a solution means that y minus 1 is a factor. So we can use that to find the other factors, right? And this also means that because y is equal to 2x, this means x is equal to 1 half. So you could do two things. You could either take the polynomial in y and divide by y minus 1 because this implies y minus 1 is a factor, right? That is the factor theorem. And this implies x minus 1 half is a factor, but x minus 1 half is not a good one. You obviously want to get, uh, you don't want to deal with a fraction. So you can eliminate it by writing this as 1 half times 2x minus 1. And if this is a factor, then 2x minus 1 is definitely a factor. Make sense? So you could also take this polynomial and divide by 2x minus 1. Whatever you do, you're going to get the exact same thing since, oops, whatever you do, you'll get the same thing, but uh, since uh, dealing with, a tr uh, I was going to say trinomial, but I meant the monic is easier, let's go ahead and use this one, okay? Cool. Let's go ahead and divide it by y minus 1. Again, you can do this any method you want. 
uh, I can break it down using y minus 1 as a factor or I can do long uh, division. I know uh, some folks like long division and they don't think it's too complicated and I kind of agree with that. So let's go ahead and do it. y goes into y cubed y squared times. If I distribute y squared over y minus 1, I get y cubed minus y squared. Then I have to negate and add. That's how you divide, right? This gives me negative 2y squared, bring down the 4y. That means I'm going to multiply next by negative 2y. If I distribute that, I'm going to get negative 2y squared plus 2y. And then if I negate this and that and add, I'm going to be getting 2y. Finally, bring down the 2, 2y. y minus 1 goes into 2y minus 2 two times. And the division is complete because when you negate, the remainder will be 0. Make sense? So this is the quotient, which means to find the other y values, because we already know y equals 1, right? Or x equals 1 half. Uh, we're going to solve the other equation, which is a quadratic. But guess what? It doesn't have any real solutions. Too bad, right? No worries. We can still solve it with the quadratic formula. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is 8, divided by 2. That's going to be the square root of negative 4, which is 2i. 2 plus minus 2i, divided by 2. And from here, y is just going to be 1 plus minus i. But what is y? y is equal to 2x. So if you go ahead and set that equal to 2x, from here, you can go ahead and find x values, 1 plus i over 2, and 1 minus i over 2. Again, you can also write this as 1 half minus 1 half i, whatever, but those are going to be the solutions. And of course, along with x equals 1 half, this is going to complete the picture, because remember, that was a cubic, and we're supposed to have three complex solutions, right? Which includes real solutions, by the way. Great, so that's the first method. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method real quick. Now, for the, uh, with the second method, uh, we have, remember, x minus 1 to the fourth equals x to the fourth. And then we're going to take the square root of both sides. When we take the square root, we have to consider the absolute value because these are even powers. So we're going to get two things from here. Either x minus 1 squared is x squared or x minus 1 squared is the opposite of x squared. And that's going to give us two quadratics. Let's call this A. Let's call this B. So let's do 2A first. You know what I'm getting at? x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals x squared. And then x squared is going to cancel out, leaving us with 2x equals 1, x equals 1 half. We knew that, right? I mean, we already got it with the first method. With the b, which is also 2b, by the way, 2b or not 2b, that's what I was trying to get at. Uh, you're going to get x squared minus 2x plus 1 from here equals negative x squared. This time, it's not going to cancel out. They're going to add up 2x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 0. And then x from the quadratic formula, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Again, that's going to be the same thing and exact same thing. Notice that? we get the exact same thing, so the solutions are going to be the same. Make sense? Okay, cool. That brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.